And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather, a regular feature here of the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. Whew. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash and Mash, and we're starting things out looking at Earth's magnetic moment from space out to about 12 Earth diameters. This is the magnetohydrodynamic pressure, like sands through the hourglass of time. These are the protons of our lives. You're looking at magnetohydrodynamic pressure in this, expressed in nanopascals as part of the space weather modeling framework. If you want to read about where the, where the data comes from, click on the details tab down here. You'll have a link to the space weather modeling framework. It'll explain all about the variables used. That's the last four hours. Pretty calm conditions there around the earthly geospace. Here are the GOES magnetometers. Over the past three days, nothing too exciting happening there. We saw a weak coronal hole wind stream. We're still waiting for a higher speed component of that. We've got proton events and other exciting stuff to talk about, so let's blast through some more. Here's Earth's magnetic moment from the ground for the past four hours. Geospace Delta B changes to Earth's B field. It's our ground magnetic perturbations. And similarly, this has a details tab. You can click on that. It'll refer you to the space weather modeling framework. The, mo the, uh, the model here is expressing nanotesla, which is magnetic flux density at the surface level, Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. So things are pretty calm here at the moment. We have seen some radio brownouts. We'll get to it. First, the real-time solar wind. And we saw a tiny, tiny coronal mass ejection strike. This is the one NOAA was forecasting. They were a little bit early in their expectation. It showed up around 1800 yesterday universal time and it was accompanied by a small uptick in the speed and density of the solar wind and an uptick in the solar wind plasma temperature so we saw an uptick to about 34 protons per cubic centimeter and not even to 400 kilometers per second just a tiny little whisk of that coronal mass ejection as it brushes past Lagrange Point 1, the location of the ACE and DISCOVER satellites. Current conditions are pretty chill here. Only 304 kilometers per second for the solar wind speed. Solar wind density 7.3 protons per cubic centimeter. And let's move on. And have a look at the heliospheric current sheet. So Earth is in a North Pole oriented current sheet right in the middle of it, basically, shown here in green. South Pole current sheet shown here in red. No expectations of sudden changes of this, although we did see the sunspot rise that we were forecasting. So there's a new sunspot just rose down here. I believe it's going to be called Sunspot 2973. That's just the line of sight view of the same data with the, with the solar magnetogram included since it's viewing the sun from Earth's perspective. We'll also look at the coronal hole plot. First, the coronal hole on 193 angstroms. We can expect a high-speed wind from that in about two days, according to the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard. Expecting some geomagnetic unrest late in the day on Wednesday the 24th. Also, additional North Pole-oriented coronal holes rotating in here. And we'll show you a diagram of that next. Another aspect of the National Sunspot Observatory, the line of sight coronal hole plot. You can see some trans-equatorial, pretty well-defined North Pole-oriented coronal holes shown there in green. Sun's B field shown in blue. And the red portions are South Pole-oriented coronal holes. As we watch the rather slow progression of the solar polar field reversal process of solar cycle 25. Exciting stuff. Next, we'll move on to sunspots, and it's going to be sunspot 2974 is going to be the name of this one. It's quite large. It already appears to be beta class. And make sure you check out our bonus feature segment. That'll be a Twitch exclusive at twitch.tv slash smash -a Our previous video was a bit shoot exclusive. Make sure you press like and subscribe if you enjoy the content on YouTube, and thanks for putting up with the pathetic censorship on the platform. Pretty low levels of solar activity here as we see sunspot 2965. Quite a monstrous sunspot throughout its passage across the earthly zone, setting there in the northwest. No major flaring here over the past 24. There was a 
pretty significant C-class flare. Besides that, just a minor C-class intensification there, a C1.2. And we saw a proton event. So this was pretty odd here. This wasn't even associated with any solar flares that I'm aware of. Peak flux was around 940 universal time. And we saw some polar radio brownouts from that. So some protons just showing up there, some relativistic particles. And there is the peak radio blackout. A bit of a polar radio brownout or blackout. You could say it's pretty close to a blackout. As solar protons arrive into Earth's field-aligned currents. What that's doing is that's attenuating the D layer of the ionosphere, causing radio signals to get emitted straight out to space instead of being reflected or refracted back toward Earth. So that's what happens when the D absorption region shows up like this. We're showing uh, attenuation of that. It's subsiding a little bit. Again, the peak brown out there was around 940, 950, something like that. There's 953, pretty significant brown out there in the D layer. Consider becoming a member of the Smash Team if you enjoy the content and you prefer to see it remain publicly visible and free for all to view. Gold and Silver members receive information nobody else gets. We'll give you a quick tour here. The GDAX daily reports are typically only for Gold and Silver subscribers. We're just going to let this scroll to show you our latest public post. This spontaneous Proton event doesn't even require login. So head to smashamash.com slash smash team. Support us via a paid silver, gold, or gold annuals paid up subscription membership to help us out. Press like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Tell your friends and foes about us. Press share and let's move on. KP index at zero. KP zero. Geomagnetic extreme calm conditions at the moment. Here's a solar system forecast. We'll advance this one week. We'll have a crescent waning in one week. As Mercury, Venus, and Earth swing around to the more populated side of the solar system. Also, we brought up a star chart here. The yellow line is the ecliptic, the path the sun will take across the sky. If you're up before dawn, you may see Mars, Venus, Saturn, Mercury, and Jupiter all rising ahead of the sun as the moon sets over there in the west. That's what's going on over my head in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. This star chart is the all-sky chart from in-the-sky.org, and we'll close out the in-depth space weather video by looking at the view from Stereo A, located at Lagrange 5, and the Soho Lasco C3, located at Lagrange 1. And we paused it at this moment here. <clears throat> Around 8 o'clock this morning, we saw a rather spontaneous CME, not really associated with any flares, a prime example of you never know when you're going to see a CME. So you just have to watch. And this does appear to have an earthly component. So there was one that happened last night that did not look like it had an earthly component. This one here. But this latest one looks like it does have a bit of ejecta headed Earth's way once again. So you can see a bit of a halo like coronal mass ejection here. The majority of the ejecta is off to the south, but there is some on both sides of the coronagraph. So this one looks like it's oriented almost directly towards stereo A. Great view of that. We can expect to see some sort of an intensification in about three days from that here at planet Earth. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. a.k.a. Smash-O-Mash, signing off from the Smash News Network, least busted name in news.